Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. We have a new cluster of earthquakes. I've been seeing a lot of comments. Thank you for sharing those. And I want to update this. This here says 29 uh, solid quakes over the last 10 days. We just had our 30th just to the north of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Again, not super high in magnitude, not trying to cause any alarm, uh, but definitely we've seen a resurgence of these earthquakes. We just had a 3.5 in magnitude. Uh, that one just occurred. So again, up to about 30 quakes in four over in four in magnitude just over the last three days. This weekend, it has been rocking around in several spots, so I wanna break down uh, the earthquakes that we've been having and exactly uh, some of the uh, bigger ones, or at least more sizable ones that we've had. Now, this is what's going on. We have the North Hispaniola Fault right through here, the Puerto Rico Trench right through here. Most of them, this cluster, and sometimes you get a cluster of earthquakes, uh, which sometimes you get slightly bigger ones, smaller ones, slightly bigger bigger ones. Again, no real pattern, but usually the clusters happen in a matter of a few days or a few weeks, sometimes a couple months. This one has really just been over the last uh, really week or so, and in particular, the last three days. But along the Puerto Rico trench, we have a transformed fault. So with that, we get more of a slide. So we've get the, we have the plates sliding past each other, and that's why we've had some of those earthquakes. And some of those have been sizable. I've been noting your comments. Thank you for letting me know if you feel any of that shaking around. So of the bigger ones we've had, this one happened yesterday. Again, we had one this morning of 3.4, but it pretty much in this same spot, just to the north of the British U.S. Virgin Islands, north of Puerto Rico, 4.6 in magnitude and not too deep, about 10 kilometers deep or six miles deep. I'll dive into the uh, depths in just a second. And then we had another one yesterday of 4.4 in magnitude and you see a very similar location, more shaking around as we get kind of that slide along the uh, fault, uh, along those uh, boundaries. So very similar spots, hence the cluster all in this area. Then this was on Saturday. Saturday, we had a 4.0 north of Anguilla. Uh, this one, as far as the depth goes, this one was pretty deep, about 40 miles or 60 kilometers down. And then we had another one on Saturday. And again, we've had a lot of smaller ones. Of course, we always get uh, shaking around. There is always that. So I don't want to spread any alarm or fear, but this is definitely an uptick. This one was 4.5 again on sat uh, Saturday depth of about 10 kilometers or six miles. This one was not too deep. And if you were able, if you were in a very still spot over towards say Antigua and Barbuda, over towards St. Martin, St. Bart's, Anguilla, you may have felt that one. So again, we have a cluster of earthquakes uh, that we've had. So watching that now, as far as the earthquake depth, a shallow one is zero to 70 kilometers uh, down or zero to 40 miles down. Shallower ones, uh, you could feel more. Now, of course, if a deep one is very strong, you would feel that as uh, well, but uh, several of these have been rather shallow, and that's why we've been feeling the shaking around. An intermediate quake, 70 to uh, 300 kilometers uh, underground or 40 to 190 miles down. In a very deep one, and sometimes if those are just uh, moderate quakes or less than that, you don't feel them at all. 300 kilometers deep or 190 miles uh, deep. So again, watching the depth of these. Does there mean there'll be a bigger earthquake? That can't be ruled out, but as far as the science goes behind that, there's not a, a forecast uh, per se for this uh, massive earthquake. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. Uh, I know those are, uh, it's very scary if you live in an earthquake uh, prone zone, super scary when you have this shaking going on, which I know. So I wanna lower anxiety by passing along all the information I have. Will there be more quakes in this cluster? Most likely, how big? Just really hard to tell. But again, watching this very carefully, as you can tell for you. So thank you for subscribing to this channel and passing along this information to get the uh, correct information out. But again, a cluster, sometimes that happens, get a lot of quakes at one time, and that's exactly what we're having. Hopefully not too big, and hopefully it actually relieves some bigger stress across the uh, boundaries. Now, what we've got going on, we're watching a few systems. There's going to be a bigger system by the time we get into the weekend and early next week, but some of that cooler air, there's the tail end of that front. I was talking about that cold front yesterday, and yeah, I've been seeing your comments as well. Northern Caribbean, and we for sure have had some of the cooler air that has been sneaking in. Let me show you what's next. So here's that old front that just rolled through Bermuda. You see that there. That's why we have some cooler weather. We've had some showers in spots, even Barbados yesterday. We had a few more showers uh, sneaking in, especially in the morning hours. Now, as we go out in time, yesterday I was mentioning that system from Canada diving down. You see here, this is by tomorrow, by Wednesday, 
all on track from what we've been talking about together. As we go Wednesday into Thursday, see this system here, it's going to bring some rain to Bermuda. But what happens with this, as this builds to the north, that is going to spin down even cooler air. So if you have some of the cooler air, we're going to see that reinforced as we get into later in the week. And then later in the week, that system moves away. But what's going to happen next, my friends, in Texas, we're going to see some rain building up here. Uh, big snowmaker, especially get, as you get near the Denver area up here. We're going to see a storm system building here, and then this one will eventually tap into some moisture in the Gulf of Mexico and bring some wet weather across parts of the southern United States, some spots where we really need it into the Southeast United States by late in the weekend and then move across. And that will bring us a better chance of rain as well across the Caribbean and another chance of cooler weather. But that will be second half of the weekend into next week. And you see all here on the winds, see those arrows, I know they're a little small, coming down out of the north, but we've had that persistent southeasterly flow. Barbados, I mentioned how some of that rain really snuck in uh, uh, early yesterday morning. We had some of that rain around, some uh, showers around, and we could see that again at times. Some islands dry, others getting wet. And then look at this. You see right there off the coast of the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida, and across the northern Bahamas, some gusty winds. This is that system diving down from Canada. So let me take out in time here. Look at that little donut hole right there. Big spin here near Bermuda. Bermuda, by the time we get into Thursday, gusty winds of 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. So giving you a heads up in Bermuda, gusty winds and rain on Thursday. But you see those arrows out of the north again in northeast across the Bahamas, uh, northern Haiti, Dominican Republic, parts of Puerto Rico, my friends in Cuba. That brings down another shot of the cool air. Then as that system moves away, I'm going to watch a bigger storm system develop. That's the one I mentioned anywhere from Colorado down toward Texas. See the winds here uh, kind of uh, colliding here. This is the next system that will roll across the United States, Southeast US, Gulf of Mexico, parts of Mexico itself, and then slide across the Northern Bahamas with a higher chance of rain early next week and some cooler weather. And as you subscribe to the channel, I'll give you the notifications. I'm gonna put out some more videos on that next system, but I wanted to dive into those earthquakes first. So for today, just really depends. There's the tail end of the front that brought the cooler weather. Some spots, yeah, we get some passing showers, Others, nothing at all. That's been the pattern. Some islands are dry, others getting some showers. You see here, this is as we work our way into tomorrow. Hit or miss shower, Honduras. Jamaica, passing shower. Puerto Rico, we could see one or two. St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, hit or miss shower. Not as much Trinidad and Tobago. We will see some wet weather around at times. Guyana and Suriname, this is for Thursday. Then we'll keep an eye on that next system that will be approaching up to the uh, northwest of us as we get into the weekend and early next week. So Jamaica, our rain chance about 30% the next couple days and about a 10% chance across the Cayman Islands. We get back toward Trinidad and Tobago. We're looking at about a 20% chance tomorrow and again on Thursday. So the rain chance is not too high, but it's there. Isolated shower, Grenada. But again, some spots, just depending on where those showers set up, will get more than this. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, rain chance 30%, 20 to 30% chance in Barbados. There'll be exceptions though. We're gonna see some islands getting some rain. St. Lucia, we're looking at a 20 to 30% chance, holding on to a 20% chance the next couple of days in Martin. Martinique in a 20 to 30 percent chance right across Dominico. Get back toward Guadeloupe, same thing. Easterly flow, 20 to 30 percent chances. We get to the north, rain chance a little higher in Tigum Barbuda because we're dealing with the tail end of that front. So, a 30 percent chance of a shower, same thing. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat in a 30 percent chance tomorrow and Thursday and Guilla and St. Bart's. Rain chance 20 to 30 percent. St. Martin, Saban Station. You see the rain chance a bit higher across Puerto Rico. Not all day stuff, but there'll be some scattered showers around and that chance of a few showers, U.S. and British Virgin Islands in those choppier seas. I was highlighting that a couple of videos ago. Dominican Republic rain chance at 40%. It is less, but it is there as we get back toward Haiti, a 20 to 30% chance of a shower. Still generally a low rain chance. Low rain chance in the Bahamas, waiting on the next storm system. Th same thing in the Turks and Caicos. And the rain chance stays limited in Cuba, only a 10% chance over the next three days. Rain chance stays very limited in Belize. A little bit more toward Honduras. Yucatan and Mexico rain chance about 5 to 10%. Aruba, 10 to 20% chance. Curacao, about a 20% chance. 
Bonaire about a 20% chance. Rain chance is higher though in Bermuda. We've got one system leaving and then the next system will start to roll in, the one coming down from Canada. Plus on Thursday in Bermuda, I mentioned the winds highlighting that for us across Bermuda. Gusty winds headed our way on Thursday. Costa Rica 30 to 40% chance, about a 40 to 50% chance of some showers. Guyana, and Suriname in the rain chance in northern Venezuela, 20 to 30 percent. That would be isolated. So plenty to cover. Of course, we have that earthquake cluster continuing. Monitor to see if we have any significant quakes out of that. Cooler air has been sneaking in. We get another system late week and early next week. We're going to have a bigger system moving in. So I'm going to highlight that in upcoming videos. So again, thank you for subscribing and I'll monitor those earthquakes very carefully. Let me know what you have going on or maybe not a whole lot going on uh, in the uh, comments. I'll get to those throughout the day. Thank you for being part of this weather community. Have a good day ahead.